Do the billionaire men use expensive prostitutes and where do they get them from? Hi, welcome back to the channel. Because of the popularity of these Q&A uh, videos, I'm going to do another one. Uh, it's been a few months since I did the last one, so let's get cracking. Okay, Jimmy in Mexico. Are yachts inspected at every country? Does every crew member ha have to get a visa in each country or only if you're going ashore? Uh, no, all the uh, yachts are not inspected in every country. The, every country has the right to inspect the yacht, but they don't all do it because there's so many yachts in and out that they just don't have the manpower to inspect everyone. But they do random checks of, of different yachts. So at any moment, you could be inspected. So you have to you have to operate as if you're going to be inspected. If you go in the Caribbean, it's quite re you do get inspected quite regularly and you get boarded for immigration quite regularly in the Caribbean. It's, it's the place that I've seen it the most. You have to be legally allowed to land in that, every country you go to. And when I say land, I mean to land from the vessel in that country legally. This is why a lot of the yachting industry is crewed by British uh, seamen because we have the ability to go to many countries without needing visas. Dusty Rusty says, are you aware of any nuclear powered private yachts? No, there, there aren't any. Um, it would be too dangerous to have uh, a nuclear powered yacht, just purely from the fact that, imagine if, the, if a pirate went onto that yacht and took over it, and then they just sail it to somewhere and then put a big bomb on it and then detonate that bomb. You've got a, you know, a, a dirty bomb, uh, which could um, render an area completely uh, uninhabitable for 50 years. So it's too dangerous. So no, that there aren't any of those. Uh, MS-37, do any yacht owners actually travel on the yacht? They seem to always be anchored in one specific spot. That's actually a good question. Uh, they do use the yachts. Um, but whether they sail on it is another question because what, in my experience, what happens a lot is the owner will say, uh, for instance, we'll, let's say we're in Gibraltar and the owner will say, I want the yacht to be in, uh, the, in the Caribbean, you know, in, in, in the next 14 days. So he will leave the yacht, he will get on his private plane and he will fly out to the Caribbean and the yacht will sail across the Atlantic and then he'll join the yacht when he gets there because he doesn't want to be on the yacht crossing the Atlantic. Uh, it's a it's a great adventure for the crew to go across the Atlantic. Uh, it's potentially very rough. It can be completely calm, which I I did a, a crossing last year, which it was like a lake every day for the whole trip. And every and I've done a lot of Atlantic crossings, and every day I, I was like, okay, tomorrow it's going to be rough. Tomorrow it's going to be rough, and it never got rough. Now on the way back. It was the opposite. I was like, oh, maybe it'll, be, uh, maybe it'll be calm on the way back. And it wasn't. It was rough every single day. So the owners don't want to, most of them don't like being in that kind of weather. So uh, the, no, they fly and they join the yacht in the nice place where it's not going to be rough. Not all of them, obviously. I don't, I've not worked on every yacht. I'm sure there are some owners out there that love it. But most of them, they don't, they don't want that. So bend over, ask other crew, including the captain, required to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. Yes, everybody is required to sign an NDA. Um, and basically the, the NDA, amongst other things, says that you're not allowed to film, uh, you're not allowed to take photographs and post them on social media. You can, you're allowed to take photographs, but you're not allowed to post them on social media. You're not allowed to take photographs of the interior of the yacht, even if you just want them for yourself. Um, you're not allowed to post on social media. It's mostly social media. You're not allowed to post on social media the location or the destination of the yacht. So you can't go on your t Twitter account and say, hey, I'm going to be in uh, Costa Rica next week because you effectively, because if anyone knows you work on that yacht, then they effectively know the movements of that yacht. So these are all fireable offenses. But yeah, everybody, everybody signs a non-disclosure agreement regardless of the rank. Denny Skerb asks, if guns are not allowed, this is going back to my previous video when I talked about other firearms on super yachts. If guns are not allowed, how about plastic explosives or types of grenades? <laughs> really? Um, no, you're not allowed. Those. Surprisingly, you're not allowed grenades and plastic explosives. I don't. Why, why would you want those? Is there some sort of experimental fishing that you want to do? 
I, I don't know why you would want any of that stuff on board, but, but no, you're not allowed to have that stuff on board either. Um, going back to that question in that previous one, I got a lot of people saying, oh, the yachts in America and the United States that have guns and stuff. There probably are because the, the laws, the gun laws in America or in the United States are very lax, if, if, if you can even call them gun laws. Uh, so I'm, no doubt when some of the yachts are just based in the US and maybe go down to the Caribbean, maybe they have different rules there as far as transporting those firearms. But I was talking more about international yachts, i.e. going into Europe and going into uh, other parts of the world other than the US, because I know it's very different there. Uh, Simon Templer asks, have you ever seen anything strange at sea that you couldn't explain? Sea creatures, floating objects, subs watching your ship, etc. Um, I've never seen any, any, uh, any creatures that I couldn't describe. I've seen plenty of whales and dolphins. I was on a, on a, a large super yacht over 120 meters once and we were at sea. I think we were going to, uh, I think we were going to Thailand. I think, I, I, I'm not sure, but we hit something in the water um, and the whole yacht juddered and we, whatever it was was submerged and um, the word from the bridge was that it was probably a whale because um, only, only a whale was big enough to cause that kind of judder. And, it, and it, it, wasn't like a, it wasn't the noise of hitting something solid and I've been on vessels that have hit solid things. It wasn't that kind of noise. Uh, Zari Sundberg says, how many years have you worked at sea? Um, I've worked at sea for about... 19 years, thereabouts. Uh, Tate Liani, I'm going to put these at the bottom, so I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, is there a maintenance schedule for metal hardware on a yacht? How long do things last due to saltwater corrosion? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, yeah, if you, if you go to um, a marina and look at the yachts, one thing you'll see is the deckhands um, cleaning constantly and if you were there if you saw it enough times you think why are they cleaning that boat again they, they just did it yesterday and that's because of this very reason because the, there's a constant battle between salt water and uh, and rusting and the, and the deckhands and that's why you'll see them cleaning down hosing everything down brushing cleaning and they're using fresh water so the water is actually create if they're in port the water is is um filled into tanks from the shore and it's fresh water. And if the boat's at sea, and if you see the boat's at anchor and there's people cleaning, that, that water is created on board with the RO plants, reverse osmosis plants, um, to um, create fresh water. And they use that to wash down the boat to get the salt water off it. Um, you know, there are various maintenance periods. Most boats go through a yearly maintenance period and then a five yearly sort of big, uh, big maintenance period where the boat usually comes out of the water and uh, the, the hull is cleaned and repainted and a lot of that kind of heavy maintenance because obviously they, they can't clean the hull every day uh, because it's underwater. So, but they do go down, they have, uh, the, they have qualified divers on board who will go down to inspect the hull uh, to clean off any, any things that have secreted themselves to the hull. Um, and to check for damage and stuff like that. And at the five year period, that that all gets taken care of in the dry dock, usually if the boss wants to pay for the paint. Morticus is, how many times have you been seasick the, and the worst voyage you've been on? That's probably only happened to me once. Um, and that was um, after a long period in the dry dock. And it was like, I'd been at sea for like 15 years at the time as well. I've never been seasick. And we came out of uh, Germany and we had to sail down to, um, I can't even remember where we were going now, but we were going through the English Channel, and the English Channel is renowned for being rough, and we were going through, it was a big boat as well I was on, um, and then, yeah, I felt sick. That was the first time I ever felt sick. It's the only time I've ever felt sick, and I've been in much worse seas than that. Um, that crossing I mentioned earlier, uh, the, coming back from uh, the Caribbean, was much, much worse than that, and uh, I never got seasick, so. But when you've been on land, like I'd been in dry dock for over a year at that time, so I, you kind of lose your sea legs. If, you, if, you don't, if you're not at sea all the time, you kind of lose your sea legs, you have to get used to it again. The worst voyage I've ever been on was a, was a crossing from um, Ushuaia in um, South America, 
down to the Antarctic uh, and we were doing the Drake Passage and that is well known for being bad. You know, you go past Cape Horn and you go down and it's three days of a constant barrage of bad weather and that was awful. Unfortunately, I never filmed it because this was, this was quite a way back. This was like, I think it was 2008. I've got some still, still pictures of it though. I'll try and dig them out and I'll put them on the screen so you can see. Uh, Ray MC, or how, how, would a, how often would a crew member have to deal directly with the owner? Depends on the crew member. Um, the chief stewardess, a butler, a captain, uh, ETO. They, they are more likely, it depends on the setup of the boat as well. Dep uh, they're more likely to have to deal with the owner on a day-to-day -day basis. Some owners have a butler. Some owners don't speak English. And let's say they speak Russian. They have a butler who speaks Russian and the rest of the crew don't speak Russian. That's where they get their privacy. So he will tell the butler what he needs and then the butler will pass that on to the rest of the crew. I've worked for English owners and they will call the people I've mentioned. They will call them directly themselves and, and speak to them directly. So some, some people, they speak to them daily. The captain is the most obvious one because if the boat is moving around and the owner's calling the captain saying, okay, let's go, I wanna to go to the next place. So yeah, it just depends on your job. Uh, Chandler Bing Bong. <laughs> Question, how are ships captains trained and selected? Do owners prefer to employ ex-Navy skippers? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're trained and selected. I mean, the training is, is, is yachting or, or the merchant navy or cruise ships. So, um, and every, every deckhand is a potential captain, right? So the, the captains all start as deckhands. They work through, they do all the training while they're at a deckhand. They'll do courses to get, to get qualified. Uh, to, and then they'll do a second, you know, a, they'll do an officer of the watch course depending on the level that they want to do there's different levels there's like under 500 tons under 3000 tons and then over 3000 tons that's a commercial license you need some of the captains are ex navy i've worked with uh, people who are ex navy i'm ex military myself so uh, you yeah. uh, demetrios siganis uh, thanks for spending time answering what is the most remote place you visited was probably the Marquesas Islands in the South Pacific. Um, Tahiti is pretty much pretty remote. Uh, Rangiroa, which is an island in that area, which is an atoll basically, and that's quite a few days, I think that's like a couple of days sailing from Tahiti. Those places are pretty remote. Uh, Bob Smithies asks, do the billionaire men use expensive prostitutes and where do they get them from? Um, uh, Bob, they're not called prostitutes when they're when they're expensive. They're called escorts. Okay, so you know there's a, there's a, there is a class system within the the uh, professional industry as well. Yes, they do use them. Obviously, not all of them. Some of them are married. The ones who are not married, they some some use escort agencies. Um, I know um, of one owner who met his wife through an agency. Uh, one of these agencies. So he he um, used the agency. Uh, they sent out this uh, woman who was a model, and um, he obviously liked her and used her on a number of occasions. And eventually, he started to uh, have a re proper relationship with it, and they got married. So, if you look at some of the videos I've done in the past about uh, Luna, for instance, and that divorce settlement, you might understand a little bit more why they do this but some yacht owners actually have, have relationships with women and they have a contract drawn up. And so they have a relationship, but she's paid a salary every month. So let's say she gets paid 20,000 euros a month and it's written into a contract. And in that contract, she has to, uh, the, the agreement is that she has to be available whenever he needs, whenever he's, he wants to get together, and she needs to perform um, professionally um, whenever he wants, or so many times uh, per week or per day, or depending on what the contract says. Um, she gets very well looked after in the sense of re remuneration, should I say. And um, yeah, they have, a, they have a contract. And this is to avoid, uh, you know, getting into a relationship where he has to have 
uh, lawyers involved and trying to do divorce settlements or common because because in in European countries you have a common law wife system where if you live together with someone for two years then that woman can actually get a divorce settlement just like they were married so they so to to avoid the, these kind of things the owners have these contracts written up and the people sign it and then the and the contracts are generally a one year or two year contracts and at the end of those contracts sometimes the owners they um they uh, move along, move on, and they get a new, uh, a new woman in with a different contract or with a new contract, and the other woman is, um, you know, dispatched, and uh, and they um, they get a new woman in and, and they start all over. So this is the way they work to protect their money. Uh, what happens when super yacht crew gets sick? Uh, what happens when you get sick? Um, Okay, so depending on the size of the yacht, some yachts have nurses on board. The yachts, I think over 100 meters, are required to have trained nurse. So if you get sick, you go to see the nurse. Uh, and on these vessels over 100 meters, they actually have a medical center as well. Anything she can't deal with herself. Then we have a system called the Medair system, which you can actually, it's com communicating over the internet and you can actually call, she can actually call a doctor on this system and she can say, I've got this patient, and then the pa obviously you can all communicate through like a FaceTime session if you like. If the person turns out they've got an appendicitis or they've got some illness where they need medical treatment, the yacht will dock at the nearest port and they will be offloaded and sent to the hospital. Now, if you're in the middle of a crossing or something um, and you can't get uh, to a port, uh, then as soon as you're within range, uh, search and rescue will dispatch a helicopter and they'll come and airlift that person off and take them to hospital. Marty Allen, if you had 40 million, would you buy a 40 meter yacht and why or why not? More likely, what, with 40 million, what I would do is I would buy an apartment on a ship called The World. I don't know whether you, you've heard of this. Um, it's a, it basically, it's, it's classed as a, a private yacht. It, it's technically, it's, it looks like a cruise ship. You might have even seen this cruise ship uh, or this ship and not even known what it was, assumed it was a cruise ship. Um, but it's not, it's, it's basically um, privately owned. But I would probably buy one of those apartments because it travels all over the world. It spends weeks at a time in different places. And the, I've been on board, my sister actually used to work on board. And the, the apartments are amazing. They've got these massive balconies, jacuzzis on the balconies. The apartments are beautifully decorated. They actually get designers, different designers to design different apartments. Uh, so yeah, I'd buy one of those because you can buy one for like two million, and then I think you pay like a hundred thousand a year, depending on the size of your apartment. You pay about a hundred thousand a year in upkeep. Uh, so I'd probably buy one of those, and then I get my uh, my fill of travelling at sea. All right, I think that's it. I think I'm out of questions. So okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, be sure to um, uh, post any comments uh, below about the questions that we've asked. If you have more questions, which I'm sure some people will, post them in this video. Uh, and then the next time we do a q and A, I I will come to this video and uh, I'm possibly go to other videos, but most likely this is what I'm gonna come first, get all the questions and, uh, and I'll do another one in a few months time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.